Did you say we're going to wait a few minutes, Charles? No, we're going to get started. People are trickling. I think he's setting up. But oh, okay. um, today we have uh, Steve Pasquini with us today, and uh, he's going to be talking about the Golden Nuggets of Wisdom for Serious Real Estate Investors. But first of all, um, let you know kind of how things work. Um, Steve's going to give his presentation. Then after his presentation, we'll have time to kind of, it's paying how people are left. To, um, get into breakout rooms and get to meet Steve and get to meet each other and talk and discuss issues surrounding real estate and capital investing and apartment hotel investing. But the first thing I always like to start off with is the background of the speaker. Uh, Steve Pasquini is the CEO of Omni Investment Funding, a full service commercial real estate mortgage lender. Omni Investor Funding has been in business for 24 years, located in Dallas. The company lead, lends nationwide with funding options for almost every type of commercial real estate property and offers loan options to suite to suit just about every investor's goals. Steve has been a real estate investor for 29 years and has owned over 50 houses and 558 multifamily units as an individual and as a managing member. He has owned and been responsible for real estate value at over 51 million. His, his skill set relating to real estate investing are extensive, including undercover, uncovering exceptional investment opportunities, negotiation, arranging funding for debt and equity, financial analysis, property management, renovation, and property sales. He has over 10 million equity. He's raised over 10 million equity and is very familiar with FCC regulations. Steve is a well-known national speaker and consultant, has advised hundreds of clients on the subject of maximizing the benefits of owning and investing in multifamily real multifamily properties. His expertise is across all aspects of the business, advising clients that currently own property and clients seeking to become an investor majority owner. He holds a private pilot license and has landed at every small and medium-sized airport in Central Texas, including cow pastures. And with that, I'll turn it over to Steve. Hey, thanks. Thanks, Charles. Yeah, uh, actually, uh, I'm a private pilot, and one of my most fun things I, I guess I've ever done is fly the small planes out in West Texas, where there are a few other planes that you have to worry about coming at you fly over lots and lots of cow pastures. So it's really a thrill. <laughs> the serious nature of being a real estate investor. Hey, welcome everybody. Thanks for being here and putting a lot of information together in a small period of time and in condensed format is the hardest thing to do ever. I'm going to rip through this and we've got a lot of information to go through here. And even if we don't get to the end, somehow we'll get this information to you and we can exchange ideas, information, golden nuggets of my wisdom, been in business for almost 30 years as a real estate investor. What is a capitalization rate? Often the number one question I get, it's kind of a mystery if you've never really looked at it and said, what the heck is it? Why is it important? I carry these three formulas that I'm going to show you here around and also show you how to do a quick valuation. What is capitalization rate? It's the gold standard. <laughs> Evaluating, evaluating commercial property. And here's what it is right here in a nutshell. This paragraph are, what are you willing to pay for a property if you pay cash? Well, that specific property in that neighborhood and that condition in today's market, it's not leveraged. There's no debt, you know, which is a loan. Debt is different than equity. It's a loan. There's no loan on it. You don't owe anything on it. So there's no mortgage. So what return, in that case, if you paid cash for it, what kind of return are you satisfied with? 4%, 6% on your money? That's always the question. That's what you have to ask yourself if you paid cash. Of course, very rarely do investors, except the really, really big concerns like insurance companies, pay cash. They're only looking for enough income to to keep up with or exceed inflation. That's a different kind of play altogether. So it, you don't pay cash very often. If you're an investor, you almost never see those kinds of transactions. But by leveraging the purchase with a loan, of course, that's where you really jump your returns up to 15 to 20% or, or even more. So that that's really it is. It's just a benchmark. A cap rate is a benchmark. It's a starting point. It's a it's a relative calculation, just like it says right here, to other properties. It's one of the three methods that appraisers use, and it's the easiest one to do. It's the easiest one to, to understand. 
starting point of valuing a property. That's all it is. Mm-hmm. So if somebody asks you, or if you want to participate in conversation, you say, a cap rate is what kind of return would you get if you paid cash for the property? There's no debt. It's just a measuring tool. It's a benchmark. Cap rates usually mirror interest rates. However, in today's market, they don't because rates have jumped up so high so quickly. So down here in these formulas, here's an indication here. The word value means the property price. NOI is actual income less operating expenses, not including the principal and interest, just your expenses like your your maintenance, property management costs. Let's see, what else? Uh, Taxes, insurance, anything that goes into the expense side. So carry these formulas with you right here to, to, to calculate for any one of these. Someone says, hey, I have a NOI of X number, $100,000. And then because you're smart and you're on the ball, you'll have some idea of what the capitalization rate in that particular market is. So you'll quickly divide the NOI cap rate, and that's going to give you the value. Vice versa, follow these formulas right here. I keep them on my phone uh, with me. So hmm. the income approach, the comparison approach, and um, this should say um, um, construction, cost of uh, construction is the other component. I had my, I had my web guy help me put all this together and found to be some typos in here somewhere. Uh, so there's a lot, there's a lot more about learning to do quick evaluations and how to prepare for financing of commercial property. We can help you with that. We're experts. So hang on to these. And here's, uh, you should always build your own performa. Here's the por- uh, pocket formula for determining property values. You, you'll want to uh, very carefully get the information that a, a seller or a broker gives you. And hopefully it's going to be a tw- uh, trailing 12 month by month report, but you need to be able to create your own pro forma, so to speak, on the back of an envelope. And here's how you do it right here. You take the current gross scheduled income. You have to have an idea of what the gross scheduled income, 100 units of the average cost is rent is say $1,000 a month. Mm-hmm. You have to do some, some pre-planning. Use that number. 100% occupancy, gross scheduled income. Take out uh, 10% for the vacancy factor because that's what you have. The smart thing to do, and a lender is going to do the same thing. They're going to take out at least 5%, maybe even 10%. Then you subtract out 45%, which essentially represents the expense factor. <laughs> Sometimes a uh, as much as 50% of all bills are paid on that particular property. Income, subtract out 10% for the vacancy rate, at least 45% for the expense factor. That number is your NOI right there. And you divide that NOI by the area capitalization rate. Mm. Now, here it is right back here, your finger. Uh, Now you know what, how to, value these properties. You divide that NOI that you just calculated on the back of an envelope, use the capitalization rate, and that's your ballpark, your starting point price for that property. Here we are, golden nugget number two. You should have an organizational chart. We have hundreds of these, literally. Here's another one down here. And it's a great way to show your investors graphically who's who's in in the hierarchy how it's all scheduled spe um, a special purpose entity most investors rather lenders are going to require you on a large transaction mm-hmm. to have a spe we won't go through all the details here but it's very very well put together you'll find it interesting that here's the holding company. If you look up the title on a company, it's going to be called this company right here. Who who manages the the holding company? This group over here, the management company. There's a separate entity, which is made up of the primary investors in the property. Mm. 
We can go through it through that in greater detail another time. This is a little more in depth in terms of the question here is if if we have a raise of a million dollars and we're going to split 50-50 with the LPs, you don't see that very often, but it does happen. So it's a what if kind of this is an actual situation here. This is just a, a what if that we put together really, really quickly. So this one is, is very, very interesting. Ballpark is that we're looking for a million dollars. Okay. The sponsor group over here is bringing 10%. We're going to bring $100,000. And we're going to go over here. And these investors are all going to group together. We're looking for four people to bring in $225,000 to raise $900,000. And here they are. These folks are going to own 50% of the property. And the sponsor group is going to own 50%, but we're only putting in 10% as the sponsor group. This is really where you make some serious money. I don't want to get off track here uh, too extensively, but I want to emphasize the fact that when you're a sponsor, typically a sponsor is going to put some money in the deal. You find the property, analyze the property, bring, bring the debt. Arrange all of the equity. Arrange the closing of the property. You're the guy with, with the experience, but your return on your money is huge, huge, huge. So this is the kind of thing that you put together internally for yourself. You know, what if, what if, what if. Organizational chart. You need to have one. I really like this idea, golden nugget number three. This is a great way to go create some cash, quick cash, cash stash. So let me go through it kind of real quickly. You, you want to do this for best results in a high demand area like Southern California, like we were talking about a little earlier, where the cap rate is generally low. In California and, and areas like that, the cap rate is, before rates jumped up, 3 or 4%. But when you do the math on a on a value add kind of property with a three or four or five percent cap rate, your returns are, are are huge, huge. The best way to do this, it's like flipping a single family house, but this is flipping a multifamily property. So you want to do a 10 to 15 uh, units because you can get in and out easily in a year. Let's say that. You can boost the rent. You really need about at least a $500 a month spread from current rents to market. Hmm. I'd say right now they're $1,000. And, and so you'd want to see that you can get rents in that market based on your comps, based on your due diligence at about $1,500 a month. This is not going to cash flow for you. This is not a cash flow play. Plan only for a lump some return on your money. You want to buy a property ideally with no more than two vacancies at purchase and you play the shuffle game. What that means is that the question is if you've got 15 units and they're all occupied, there's a way to go in, give them an incentive, one or two at a time, get them moved out or move to another place even temporarily, get going on a rehab project and get that whole property done less than one year, you get it back on the market, you get it sold in less than 18 months. And I'm telling you the return, you do some, uh, I'm going to do some really super crazy math, quick math here. $500 a month is our, 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 our boost is we're looking for at least $500 a month times 15. That's uh, simple math, $7,500 um, per month times 12. Um, that's a $90,000 annual increase, right? Divided by a 0 0.05 cap. Man, that's $1,800,000. No more to it than that. But your net, typically, well, I've done some math right here for you. Um, this, I tell you what, this is when I first came across this when I was new in the business. The first thought is, why do I want to buy a property at a 3 or 4 or 5% cap rate? This is the answer right here. So if you, if you follow through, go back and take a look at this later on. Long story short, and these are real numbers, 
pretty doggone close, not exact. But if you can find a 15 unit property with about a $500 a month differentiation between what it's renting for right now compared to what real rents are in the market, top of the market, you're looking at a net profit of somewhere about $800,000 plus or minus. I'm talking about after all expenses. I don't know how else you can, you, you can build a cash stash any better than that. You get three going at the same time, man, you're building a really huge cash stash. Okay, different subject. So here, this is golden nugget number number five. What's needed to send to your lender to request a loan? Be prepared. A bridge loan with rehab as opposed to bridge loan with no rehab. We're actually doing, you see a lot of bridge loans. They just need a loan right now. They're not going to do rehab. They need to get out of their current loan. They need to move from where they are for a short period of time. A bridge, that's what it is. It's a short-term loan. Maybe three years at the most versus a longer term loan, which is what, five, seven, 10. You even have some loans, we can go 30 years fixed rate on smaller types of property. So here's the list right here of the items that typically you should have as a serious real estate investor. Be ready to provide all these items right here. Be prepared. Here's a bridge with a rehab. Here's a bridge with no rehab. Basically the same thing uh, without, uh, you'll notice this one, looks for a line item list of material and labor, and this one does not. And again, here's a reminder, build your own performance. The seller has um, little to no property information. You can use the rule of thumb. There's just a lot of different ways. You see a lot of properties that come to us from buyers with very little information from the seller. It's not rocket science on, on how to build. We could, I could, Charles could, I'm sure many others on the list here tonight, could build your own NOI, your own income and expense report, without having any information from that seller. On, on a refinance, very much the same as the other two options. However, on this one, we need to see what the... Uh, um, let's see what the payoff is, should be on this list, trailing 12 months, schedule of real estate owned, and um, it should be, should be uh, ideally 80% occupied. Golden nugget number, number, number 6666, six, 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 raising equity. Be compliant. Be compliant. We could, we could be talking about this for the whole hour or, or, or days on end, but know what Regulation D, Rule 506, A, B, and C are. It's a lot of information online. You can't just ask investors to invest in your deal without some following some basic guidelines. You have to have a relationship. What is a relationship? Well, that's a discussion on to itself. We do have a qualification sheet so one page prepared by our SEC, Securities and Exchange Commission attorney that we use, we're glad to hand out, send us an email, and we'll, we'll get that to you. It's highly, understand, this is highly, highly regulated by the Securities and Exchange Commission. Using an attorney is, is really the best way to go here. If you don't, you're taking a huge, you're a huge risk. The, 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 the issue here is if you don't, if you raise money as equity, from another person and there's a problem with the deal and you don't have a private placement memorandum, a PPM, and that other person is a really unhappy camper, all they have to do is pick up and call the state or federal SEC and you could be in big trouble. What is accredited investors? A lot of information online. Know what an accredited investor is. These are all the basic things that you need to know when you're investing or networking with, with other investors or in a group. And this, this will put you in a position where you can talk one-on-one, -on -one, where other investors will take you seriously, and you can bring some expertise to the table. You don't have to be an expert. You have to have a pretty good round idea of how all this works. And that's largely the intention of how we put this together. 
You don't need to know all of this. I would suggest that you look at it and capture some of these, and really be well versed and be able to talk about it really well. How to get the intention of a seller regarding this uh, the sale price. I love this one. So the income and expense information that you get from a seller is rarely, rarely accurate. That's why you need to put your, your own together. So you need to build a, a pro forma, the exact numbers that the seller gives you. And then you put his pro forma together, you know, taxes, and uh, they might leave out taxes and insurance. And if his vacancy rate is 75% and he's proposing it's uh, 90%, then you got to go back to him and give him the same information he gave you, but don't use a pro forma format put it in a really really simplified outline and then you do one because his numbers are just not going to work you say mr mr investor i'm putting all your numbers together here they are right here this is what you gave me and you know what i can't get along with this problem no one's going to be able to get finance here. now you build yours with your realistic numbers right here your performance you put in realistic numbers, loan to values and today's interest rates, and you say to the Mr. Seller, here, here's what I'm um, willing to offer you today, and here's why. I'm, I'm using your numbers. Nobody's, nobody's going to buy your property with that, that NOI that you're, that you're showing me. So how do you structure a partnership? Well, the nugget, um, nugget number eight. This is one of the first things that investors have. Uh, when I do uh, talk to a group of 250 people or so, they, they crash, crash their head. Sounds great, but how, how do I put it together? How do I do that? How do I go to somebody if I have one partner or I have two or three partners or if I bring in 10 investors? Who's on the sponsor side? Who's on the LP side, the limited partner side? You have at least four primary components. There's voting control. Put my fingers in front of the camera here. The share of cash flow, share of profits upon sale, and tax benefits. That's on the general partner side. On the limited partner side, they get most just about the same, but they almost never have any voting control. Yes, I know there's a voting control component in the operating agreement that does give some control over the general partnership, and typically that takes place in a situation where things are not, not going well. So for simplicity's sake, let's say that you have one other partner and uh, no experience. I want to shoot, I want to jump now to this chart though. Let me see if I can do this. And Charles, you walk me through this in case, um, let's see, I want to share my screen. And I wanted to click this one on here, this chart. Tell me if you see this. You see this chart? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay, good. So we put this chart together. It's somewhat outdated, but it, 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 it does the job. So what you're seeing here is a scenario. Value add deal. Purchase price 5.6 million. You're going to need about 35%. Make a note of that. Any property today, you're going to need at least... 35% in cash as a percentage of that purchase price. That's a different discussion we're going to have. So we need $1,960,000. Uh, this is scheduled so that here, this is me right here, for example. I'm going to bring 1% because I'm going to be on the sponsor side. Here's the sponsor side right over here. All your columns, all the benefits, the cash, asset management, uh, acquisition fees, share of cash flow, share of profits, tax benefits, and voting control. Here it is right here. I'm going to bring a whopping 1%, $19,600. This is not fantasy. This is typically how transactions work because the sponsors typically bring about 10% of the needed equity to make the deal work. I brought in Bob because Bob is the guy with good credit. He's got cash. He's got experience. And I can take him to the bank and I can get our deal financed because Bob's got his stuff together. 
and he's going to have to bring $176,000 to the deal because we want to, we really want to get to about the 10% range right here. And our friendly LP partners and that we raise money from through a raise, say a 506B, more than likely. So there we are coming up with our grand total of 1.96. And also because I'm the guy that found the property, I put the debt together. I coordinated raising the cash. I coordinated the purchase of the property, et cetera, et cetera. I'm going to take an asset management fee, which is very typical, 3% of the monthly collections. And because I, the day of closing, because I'm the guy who did all the work, brought the deal to the table, I'm going to take a 2% uh, acquisition management fee. <clears throat> so that's that part. The share of, share of cash flow, I'm only get 5% across the board cash flow, share of profits and tax benefits. My friend Bob, we're only going to get 20%. I think if, if you grasp what I'm telling you here, you, if you haven't seen this and if you're not familiar with it, at this point, you can probably hold in your head and say, holy cow, I never realized. If you do the math on this, my friend Bob, <laughs> based on very, very standard figures, probably going to get about a 50 to 60 or more percent return annually on his money. That's why you want to be a sponsor. Now, keep in mind that there's more detail down here. The objective, the number one objective, when you build your, your deal using your pro forma, you're using all the other income uh, factors that, that, that you can gather. And, and you've got to target a cash on cash return for your investors. Maybe it's a maybe it's a 90-10 split. This particular one is a an 80-20 split. This scenario right here. If it's a crazy good deal, maybe you can do a 50-50 with your sponsors, but the rather with your LP investors. But you have to structure that deal so their return is satisfactory, whatever the market is today for a similar kind of property. If you can get them 20%, 22-23%, in that range, actually it's gone down a little bit now because of a higher interest rates. <laughs> And, and everything else sort of falls in place. But another thing I want you to see here and understand is what are we doing with the tax benefits? I'm just going to take 5% and Bob's going to get 15% because he needs it more than I do, right? And these guys are going to get their, their fair share of all those. And this is all put together in the operating agreement. All fields are detailed in the company agreement, the company I'm an operating agreement. <clears throat> Excuse me. Voting control. I'm uh, I'm I'm the guy that did all the work, right? I'm the guy with experience. <laughs> Therefore, I'm going to have voting control. Bob is okay with that. This is all hypothetical, but it's real. <clears throat> Who's going to be a sponsor on the deal? We're going to be the sponsor. That is on a non-recourse loan. You still have recourse if things go bad. Incident doesn't mean you have complete non-recourse uh, on a loan. Who's going to be the managing member? The two of us are going to share that responsibility. So take a close look at this. If you have some questions, let me know. And let's hop back to share screen. Um, share screen. Go back to this one here. Whoops, is that right? How do we get there, Charles? Well, It'd be up in a minute. Okay. Right, there we go, right there. So this is where we started on that. So this is sort of a rehash of the chart that we that we just looked at. But understand that you can you can mix and match the voting control, the split of cash flow with your partner, and 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 most attorneys, I made a note of this. Here it is right here. Most attorneys, if you use one, fail to mention this to you. It's too easy for them to say, gee, you should give 
70% to investors or 80% to investors, and then you two guys take uh, 20% of everything. It doesn't have to be that way. There are some other regulations and guidelines concerning IRS regulations, so you should also solve the CPA. Golden nugget number nine. How are we doing on time? Um, right, 30. Let's, okay. So <clears throat> your renters are your valuable partners and your, and your customers, and you should treat them with extreme. I've had hundreds and hundreds of residents, even when I first started out, you know, I had a duplex and then triplex and a fiveplex and a tenplex, and a lot of them were um, Section 8, right? But they have the same need, the same level of, of, of care that, that you do as an individual. You know, put yourself in their shoes. They want a nice place to live with their family that's safe and, and welcoming. And you can hold events like once a quarter, show appreciation, all kinds of ways to do it. You can, uh, some of the ways that, that we've done this, we go to certain nonprofit groups in town. They will bring computers to a training room and you make that available to, to the kids. Or, or I'm sorry, you bring the computers and, and the nonprofits will, will bring um, usually young college students to work with younger people, show them how to, how to use computers. Or how we we've actually done we've done programs as a event to with our renters to show them how to purchase a house. It sounds crazy, right? But they love it. And they tell their friends, hey, come over here and rent in this apartment complex, and they'll actually show you, walk you through what you need to do to rent a house. And there are a lot of charity groups and nonprofit groups that provide this free training as well. We just a lot of endless possibilities hold a Thanksgiving party event, Christmas event, decorate. Be sure that you have an understanding with your management company that, that, that you want things done that way. Have it in writing. Golden Nugget number 10. Here's your free report. I don't know if this, uh, I'm not going to click this on right now because that'll sideways. This is a report that, that I authored, and it's been downloaded thousands of times about how to find multifamily deals. It's going to talk largely about LoopNet. I know what you're saying. That's where properties go to die. The truth of the matter is almost any property, almost any property that's on the market is going to be listed there, whether it's a good deal or a bad deal. But one of the great things about it is it's number one way that you can use to network with realtors all across the country that have listings. And number two is it's a great way to learn what's taking place in different markets. I'm in Dallas. Maybe I'm looking at a property in Phoenix. I want to take a look at what properties are on the market there and what their capitalization rates are. You can download that um, for your own information. Golden Nugget number 11 got to gain basic knowledge of market conditions and understand what the metrics are. Got to know the territory, as the saying goes. So this is a multifamily market, uh, market research sources, sources of market and industry information, multifamily investing and ownership, commercial and industrial information, aggregators. LoopNet is on here, apartments.com. A lot of these are familiar to you. There's three pages here. These links are live, and I can send this uh, to you if you wish. Glad to share it with you. These are all sorts of information that we give our clients when we're, we're doing consulting work with, with, uh, with clients. But if you're going to do a deal almost anywhere, you want to go in, and see for yourself what the, what the rents are, some, some, some of the very best sources. I'm sure that CoStar is on here. Um, National Apartment Association, and by the way, publishes an annual report. This is 2024, so they will publish a report for 2023 
of almost every kind of multifamily property that you can imagine. It's it's put together. They 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 take a survey of about ten thousand different apartment units. Whether it's five hundred units, they'll break it down for you. You go to a property that's a Class C in a certain area with with no more than a hundred units. It's a tremendous resource to get some real data that makes you an expert, give give you an idea of where you need to be on a deal. Here's more more um, contact information for you. We can get this information to you if you'll send us an email and request the multifamily market research sources. These are actually live links here. Key terms to make you sound like an investor pro. Golden nugget number 12. So know what a performa is. This is the way it's typically spelled. It's not a spreadsheet. It's a performa. Gross rental income that you'll find on a, on a rent roll. Actuals as opposed to a lot of these, uh, the information OMs, operating memorandums that you get for a broker are their, their projections, their performa, they'll call them performa type numbers. What would it look like tomorrow and four or five years from now? Well, that's important to you, but what you need to know is what are the actual right now, because that's what you're going to base your, your purchase price. on. Perhaps you'll, you'll recognize a lot of these other terms. Very, very critical that you understand what these are. Submarket. What is a submarket? I'll use Dallas, for example. There are about 25 submarkets. Each submarket is broken down, and, and in those submarkets, there's generally very similar kinds of properties. Uh, for example, from a, um, a, a cap rate as low as 4%, to properties that have just working class people that live there, those cap rates are a little higher. The properties are probably a little older. Submarket. So if you if you grab some of these and learn them, and when you're talking to other investors and you know exactly what a trailing 12 is, it's a month by month, last 12 months, not one, not one column often what we see is one column a grand total for the whole year it's not really a lot of good information to work with we want 12 months a trailing 12 we have uh, examples of all of these kinds of uh, information and charts physical occupancy that's that's important to know Another page here for nugget number 12, section eight, uh, the RUB system, residential utility billback system. You need to know what that is. Recourse versus non-recourse, 1031 exchange. I know you, you've heard a lot about these, but understand what, what, what these are and it's not rocket science. And you can look them up and in a short period of time, you'll gain confidence in your knowledge and and what you're talking about, and that will rub off, and other people will recognize. It. Number thirteen, it all revol uh, all revolves around time, money, and expertise. Put together your power group. So let's assume that you have time to invest. You have an area of expertise, such as maybe finding properties. You have a good command of putting together a performa but you're sure of cash. Does that remind you of having buddy lately? So join a group online and your pitch is, hey, Mr. Investor, I'm willing to share my expertise because I'm pretty good at finding properties. And, and actually I can do some, uh, some analysis properties. That's what I'm willing to do. And you see two other like-minded pe uh, like people, highly motivated and I see this mostly with ladies, with gals who are really on the ball to start out knowing nothing and they do their homework and they get to the point where now the, the light shines and it finally occurs to them, hey, you know, the three of us can put our power to group together. We're going to share time, money, and expertise. 
And so you divide up who does what, you actually put a chart together. That's that's what, what we've done before. Whenever I work with uh, other partners, you literally have a chart. Who does what, who gets what. Every single task that you can possibly imagine. So here's your pitch right here. Between the three of you, let's say it's, it's three. You divide up who does what, who's going to invest um, their time, who's going to be out talking to investors. And, and you create your own expertise. You mix and match between the three of you. You jump through hoops. Now, you don't have to have $20,000 of cash. This is hypothetical. This is what I'm suggesting that you do between the three of you. So you have some skin in the game. And um, so you market uh, hard to find deals, learning how to use, go out there and find those hard to find deals. Go on LoopNet and just find one. Find one as a hypothetical situation. And this will, this will be your area of expertise. If just finding deals. Hey, Mr. Investor, I know how to find deals. I've done it. We're in Phoenix and I've, I've grabbed a hold of a co-star report. I've jumped on LoopNet. I see what's available. And as a matter of fact, here's my one page pitch. So again, it revolves around time, money, and expertise. So you're going to put together a hypothetical deal, a deal that's on the market for sale. It's just a one page flyer. It's hypothetical, Mr. Investor. We're not really going to buy this, but this is the kind of property that, that we have found that we think fits your guideline, what you're looking for. And on your hypothetical data sheet, you're going to have these items, the purchase price, uh, some, some pictures, the number of units, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you should use a disclaimer on there, uh, incidentally, to stay compliant. It's not a solicitation to invest for informational purposes only. <laughs> so it's similar to a selling broker's one-page deal overview. You know, you get a deal from a broker on an OM operating memorandum, offering memorandum, OM, and there's typically a, a one-page deal overview. So now your objective is to... Um, to get a commitment for another $180,000, you're going to bring your $20,000. You're looking for two hundred, uh, a grand total of $200,000. Now, that, that's good for 25% down payment on an $800,000 property. Okay, so back over here, you're going to set up, you're going to find some, some other, at least one or two other people, guys and guys and gals and guys together, However, it works for you. You just got to get out, knock on doors, pass out business cards, uh, start talking about what expertise that, that you have. And you've put together, let's see where, you've put together potentially another $800,000, uh, $180,000. Now you've got $200,000. And you're going to use that form that's mentioned, this SEC form. It's one page. Hand it to them. They look at it, they sign it, they say, yes, I'm accredited, or no, I'm not accredited, I'm sophisticated, you have them sign it, drop it in the file. Now, now you should be generally approved to be able to talk to that person about a particular deal because you have qualified that qualified both, both uh, all parties. So here's some more about how to set up your time, money, expertise, power group. Join a group, and um, here's your pitch right here. We part targeted properties in Florida and Texas. And we're seeking one more investor to join our group because we have all the data. Talk to a lender. We have a really good idea of how to get this finance, and here's our one-page pitch. By this time, you put your own performance together, right? You've got that in your back pocket. You've got that in your folder. Mr. Investor, I've got a one-page pitch deck here for you, but you know what? We've done all of our work. We've got a complete performer that we you know what the picture's going to look like Oops, from day one through, through year five. Be bold. Go out there right now. Go out there right now and get an LOI or a purchase and sale agreement. 
then your pitch is, uh, uh, Mr. Investor, we, we have an LOI right here. And he's going to say, oh, okay, it's not hypothetical. No, no, it's not hypothetical. This is a real property. We've got a, we've got an LOI in the property. It's got great potential. We're seeking another member to bring our sponsor group. And we need somebody that. We want to learn from you because you're more experienced than we are. Sorry, that thing keeps jumping around. Until you have somebody qualified, don't mention your projected return, your uh, projected return. Uh, everybody does, right? It's hard not to. But what you want to avoid is running into that cranky person who's looking, you know, because they know everything and they don't mind creating a problem. They'll tell somebody else about something silly, say, oh, so-and-so is talking about returns, they never have the property, they don't have a contract in the property, and it's, uh, I'm sure you get where I'm coming from on that, but so be compliant. We'll get that form to you, hand it to somebody, and uh, then you can have a sense of relief in actually talking about returns in particular properties. So if you can control about $200,000, you really have something to talk about to other investors. Set up your LL, uh, your LP. Oh, you start as an LP. You can start as an LP, limited partner. Don't have to be a sponsor. Work up to being a sponsor. That's where you want to be, a GP, a general partner. And, and uh, this leads to our next golden nugget. You can start this by being a connector. I know there's some connectors online tonight. I know them uh, personally. A lot of gals start that way. Bring people together. The whole purpose of, the, of this golden nugget is to get the bowl, ball rolling for you. Light a fire, make some things happen. Put a plan of action together. Execute it. Revise as necessary. And just, and just do it. Now, who wants to save a lot of money in your next deal for our attendees tonight? Here's what we're, we're going to do. I'm glad you could make it here. Omni Investor Funding is offering a 20% off origination fee. And on a, say, a $4 million deal, you're going to charge 0.80 instead of 1% or 2%. 2% is, is not out of the question at all. And on a $4 million deal, it's to save you about $5,600, plus all of the advice whether it's a good deal or a bad deal, we'll, we'll tell you. A lot of, I, I would have to say, wish I could show you the stack of deal, uh, folders on, on the floor here right behind me that we spent a lot of time on and went back to the client and say, here's what you have to do if you can make it work. Uh, which typically uh, uh, the hurdle is, is just coming up with, with the cash. So we have a lot of funding options available for almost every investor's qualification and deal size. And uh, we actually have some experienced investors looking to JP with JV with you. They can bring cash and consider acting as a sponsor on your deal. Minimum million dollars for qualified investors. Got some deals uh, in the pipeline. You know the area, you know how to, Put together, you understand completely how to put together a performer. You may be able to bring some others that in JV with you prefer to find deals in Florida, Texas, Georgia, maybe even Tennessee. And we're glad to, because you've been here tonight, to consult with you, help you however we can to get your real estate investing off to a good start, or even if you're experienced. You want to get to the next step. You need some input concerning what's available in the market today in terms of, of debt. So here's how you can be. Uh, you can be a connector. You can bring a small two family or any other kind of commercial deal. You're going to earn some really uh, significant you know, commissions. We're looking for those with a solid sales background. Really need, uh, you don't need to have any background in lending or real estate. You can be a connector in your, in your spare time. And uh, you can do this uh, uh, on, on purchase or refinance transactions. Typically, they're on purchase transactions. 
got to have a fully equipped office and we'll assist you of how to go about this, how to uh, find an investor already with already with a letter of intent or a purchase and sale agreement on a property that they're they're all they're looking for funds and they're all looking for funds, uh, rather equity, the cash component, that big hurdle. So these are the kinds of properties that we can finance for you. We'll give you some messages, some posts to use, some scripts, what to say, what not to say. And you find the, the ideal kind of person. We're not looking for $200,000 kinds of transactions. We're looking ideally for transactions where the, the property value is a minimum of a million dollars. We can take it from there, keep you in the loop, and you can learn as you go through this process, and then you would be a loan officer. Why not? So you can make easily $100,000 if, if, if you get several large large transactions in the pipeline. Even a small deal is like $2 million. It's a win-win for everybody, for the client, for our company, and for you. We've been in business for 24 years. We can arrange funding in just about every state. I've been an investor for 30 years, and I could write a book on it. I, I guess I, I guess I should. And uh, I've owned over 50 houses, over 500 apartment units. We have a full pipeline of deals right now that we can't close for various reasons. You know, they, we can't close them all. We're glad to share our expertise with you. It's a $100 cost uh, for one one hour training, and you can bring some some one other person if you want to do that. So. Send us a resume. Let's connect. Let's uh, I'm get your deals funded. You see, I'm going the wrong direction. Bum, 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 bum. So here's some some recommendations that we've gotten from a lot of people we've worked with over the years. We've done large transactions with them, small transactions, and um, I think that um, that's everything that I've got. The golden nuggets. If there's any questions, we can talk about that. But I would, I would seriously encourage. I would suggest that you start with uh, information such as how to structure a a um, how to structure your your holding company and the partnership. Most most attorneys don't uh, tell you they make it try to make it really too easy. But when you go in, you tell the attorney the way that you want it done. You can take the take their advice, of course. Do that. Build your own performa. But understand that it's down here. What happened to it here? It's here. Whoops, um, yeah, here it is right here. Um How to structure your different components. Sorry, I'm kind of jumping around here. Your different components of forming an LP, limited partnership. Divide all of those components. Here it is right here. <laughs> know that it doesn't have to be if, if you're doing, if you put together Usually we see 80, 20 kinds of transactions taking place, 80% to the investors and 20% to the partners. But know that it doesn't have to be across the board, 80, 20. There's all kinds of different ways that you that you build waterfalls to your, your returns. So you, you explain that, you can show it to your investors through an organizational chart, often has that kind of uh, information in it. Whoops. And understand there's lots of different ways that you can put these organizational charts together. The more detail, the better. You can make them really, really complicated. What this does and doesn't have is information along these, these lines here showing particular um, 
some of the, the numbers are sort of buried down this way. I, I typically like to see the percentages of ownership and shares of cash flow on these lines here. This is a little more advanced. This one here, this is less advanced, but you can put together and So does anybody have any questions? Mm -mm. How are we doing on time, Charles? Been good. Like, um, wow. We had time for questions. Help you asked if you could share the presentation with them. Yeah, that's going to be on, on uh, sure. Yeah, the one that you're going to put online on is not going to be, uh, it won't have live links in it, but uh, this one will be glad to. To do that, they'll send me uh, an email. Here's the email address right up here. Right up here. Can you, can you put your email in the chat, Steve? And if you have it. Um, can I put it in the chat? Yeah, let me see. Let me find the chat. I'll do, it's right up here on each slide. Oh, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Questions? How, how many of you uh, own properties? Um, hey, Steve, do you uh, loan on hotels too, or is it just uh, multifamily? Sure. Yes, we do. We do loans on hotels. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. It'd be, uh, I'm looking at a distressed mul uh, multiple uh, cabins <laughs> that are going to be need to re re rebuilt. What, what kind of LTV are you looking at? Did you say cabins? Correct. Yeah. It's a resort. Yeah. Okay, you mentioned hotel. Is it a hotel or? It's a resort. Sorry, a, a resort. Okay, are they are they uh, cabins attached to a concrete foundation, air conditioned, and heated? They will. Yeah. Okay, they're going to need to be rebuilt because they they were demoed and that guy skipped town uh -huh. uh, with the money, so they've been exposed for a year and a half. So we're just going to. Uh -huh. Okay, so you need a construction loan to start with. Maybe depends. Yeah. Yeah. Almost well, at least at least a uh, bridge loan with a lot of rehab, and you're going to have to have plenty of cash, right. and um, treat it just like a vacant property. You can finance a vacant vacant property if that buyer, in this case, you are they all vacant? Yeah, so it's it, it, it's a resort, so they they're not rented. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah, yeah. Did the so guy uh, that the owner um, gave up because uh, just had a baby, so she wasn't able to. Keep how many? Going. How many? How many cabins? Seventeen. What's the price of the property ballpark? Uh, probably like one and a half. Probably I'm thinking around eighty-five for each rehab on the cabins. You're going to have to have experience or somebody on your sponsor team with similar experience to to do that. That that and, would be. And, so and I bought and, and sold six uh, comps. Okay, cool. And significant cash as well. Yeah. well loan to value in something like that is not going to be high. Okay. And uh, unless the land has uh, really, really significant value. It's beautiful, the land. It's in the Catskill Mountains, so you can see the yeah. mountains. Okay. Sounds, sounds, so sounds like a nice area. Creek and, you know, everything. Right. So, uh, honestly speaking, that, that kind of, if I were you, I'd go to local banks and see what their appetite might be for that kind of, and that will certainly give you an idea of what to expect from the bank. That's, that's one of the questions I always ask. Have you been looking around shopping the deal? What, oh, what yeah. kind of talk to everybody? Oh, you have already. Yep. Okay. And, and, um, have you gotten any loan offers? Yeah. 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 So, so that's why I was asking you. So if you want to sure. Just... Yeah. We'd be glad to take a look at it. Absolutely. Okay. If you can, uh, if you wouldn't mind sending me, send me an email right up here. What is your email? You, or, or do you want to just send me an email? Sure. I'll just send you an email because okay. I'm, I'm going to add in some more information that I just found out. So it'll be a little more concrete. So. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. Thank you. Great job. Today. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Um, are we going to break out into a, a breakout room, girls? Yeah, let me stop the recording real quick.